Hello students, today we're going to do a thermodynamics problem. There's a lot of words in this problem. It's longer than I wish it were. The gist of it is just that we are going to take these 22.5 grams of ice that's not at zero degrees Celsius. It's actually colder, like what you might pull out of a freezer. And you quickly throw those ice cubes into a hot bowl of soup. And I've given us the temperature of the soup and I've given us the mass of the soup. And the question is simple. What is the final temperature of the soup after everything has come to equilibrium? So everything that I've given here in blue is needed information, but it's really just kind of some values that you would be able to look up in a textbook. Remember, pure water by itself is one calorie per gram per degree Celsius for its specific heat capacity. Here's what it is for ice. And then we're also going to have a phase change with that ice where it's going to melt. And remember, melting falls under this enthalpy of fusion, these fancy words we use, these latent enthalpies, these phase changes. And so fusion would be that process of freezing, but then the reverse is melting. And the number, though, is the same for either direction. You would just have a differing minus sign. So we have all of our info. Let's see what we would do here. The idea and I've seen this written in a couple of different ways, and I'll write both. Q of the ice plus Q of the soup, that has to be equal to zero. We are saying that all energy transfers happening between these two materials, we're simplifying it, nothing's lost to the outer world. So one of these obviously has to have a minus sign. Minus sign means losing energy. So this guy is going to be a negative if we are really particular about it. Remember, one of the primary equations that we're going to be using says that Q is equal to MCP delta T, where a delta T is always a T final minus a T initial. And I can't stress that enough. I think one of the biggest challenges of these types of problems tends to be minus signs. But what you can always rely on is that delta T is always final minus initial. And let that be the thing that tells you what your sign should do. Just conceptually think about this. If the final temperature of the soup is smaller than what the initial temperature was, then delta T will become a negative quantity, which means that I will get out a negative Q, which is what I was talking about we would have over here. Now I can just briefly rearrange this equation and I can also write this, just subtract one of these guys to the other side and I can say that Q for the ice is negative Q for the soup. Certainly it doesn't matter what place I put that minus sign so I can have negative Q of the ice is equal to Q of the soup also. It doesn't matter how you want to treat this but this minus sign needs to come up somewhere. What you're going to see me do is you're going to see me just calculate Q for the soup. And I'm going to do that as a standalone thing. And it will be a negative. Then I'm going to calculate Q for the ice. And it will be a positive. I'm going to have a variable in this though. So that's going to be really hard to see. And then what you're going to see me do later on is I'm going to take one of these terms. It doesn't matter which one. And I'm going to put a minus sign on the thing. And so just kind of look out for that as we move forward. So let's go ahead and just start with the ice. There's no reason why I need to start with that one, but that's what I'm going to do here. And there's really three different processes that the ice is going to have here. First, we are going to heat the solid. And so I'm going to say heat the solid here. Then we are going to melt the ice. And then we are going to heat the liquid water that once was ice. Each of those can be treated individually and we can add them all together and that's the total amount of energy associated with taking the ice from its initial low temperature which was given in the problem at negative 10 degrees Celsius up to whatever that final temperature is going to be. So heating the solid is going to be this QMCP delta T that I have written down here in the corner. So the Q for that is going to be the given 22.5 gram mass multiplied by the specific heat, which is right here, of the ice, which is 0 0.486. This is in calories per gram per degree Celsius. Then I have delta T, which is always final minus initial. So that's going to be 0 degree minus 
from the delta t itself, from the t final minus t initial, and then I plug in my negative 10 value, so I get a double negative sign there. So that'll be a positive. So notice gram cancels gram and degrees Celsius cancels the degree Celsius on these numbers. And I'm going to be left with a number in calories, which is 109.35 calories. So that's just for that first step. I'm going to kind of switch colors here. It's looking like things might get a wee bit cluttered here in a moment. Okay, for melting. That latent heat, those are actually pretty easy to calculate. If you come and you find that number, which is right up here, it's this many calories per gram of the stuff. Your temperature doesn't change during that melting process, so you are not using the equation down in the bottom. The Q associated with this one is just going to be the mass, 22.5 grams of the stuff, times that energy, 79.8 calories per gram. I'm putting energy in in order to melt. Energy into a system is always a positive Q. Notice gram cancels with gram. So really I'm using those units in order to figure out that that was the equation I needed. So this guy ends up being 1,795.5 calories. It's interesting just to note how much larger that number is than our first one. Those phase changes, those are always huge, important factors for any energy change sort of problem. Okay, the last step here, heating the water. This is where things are going to be a little bit interesting. So this Q, we're using liquid water now, and we're back to this Q equals MCP delta T. So I have my 22.5 grams. I know that number. I also know that I have one calorie per gram per degree Celsius. That's right here, that's liquid water. Then here's where the, the problem is. I have T final, which is a variable for me. Minus T initial is zero degrees Celsius. Gram happily cancels gram, degrees Celsius happily cancels that. And this ends up being 22.5 multiplied by the variable TF. Okay, and as I said before, you can just add all of these different energies together, and that's the total energy associated with the ice. So I'm going to write that in the corner so that I can reclaim the middle of the board space, but adding this 109 number to that almost 1800 number gives me 1904.85. I will do some rounding a little later on and then 22.5 T final. Okay, I'm just tucking that into the corner for now. And we're going to move on to the soup. The soup is not undergoing any phase changes. So in a way, it, it is simpler. It simply is its Q, then the mass of the soup. I've got more soup than ice cube, hopefully. 350 grams, and then I'm going to use the specific key to my soup. 0.885, that's calorie per gram degree Celsius, times T final, there's that variable again. We're making an assumption, a good assumption, that everything goes to the same temperature. So those are common T finals there. Minus the temperature it started at, which was 64 degrees Celsius. You can see ultimately this is going to have two terms. I can combine those two numbers together. Gram will cancel and that'll be great. Degree Celsius is going to cancel. This will be something that is involving calories here, which is good. That's what Q is measured in. But I'm going to take this number and I'm going to distribute it onto the TF and onto the 64. And I'll write it here in green. The Q is going to be equal to 309.75 T final minus 19824. Okay, so I have my two Q values now, and I'm actually done with this equation. Where we're going now is what I was talking about at the very beginning. Either I take both of these Q expressions, where I have the soup plus Q of the ice, and set them equal to zero, or I do this. I do Q soup is equal to Q ice, but one of them needs a minus sign. 
And it really is the same thing. It's just identical mathematically. So here we go. Now it's just some algebra. 309.75 T final. I'm going to just do this, by the way. Minus 19824 is equal to... Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to have this be a minus because it was a plus. And this is also going to be a minus now because it was a plus. Negative 1904.85 minus 22.5 TF. Now I'm going to group like terms. My two terms that have a T in common would give me this, T final. And then my two terms that don't will give me this, 17919, rounding that a bit. I'll divide that 300 number over, and I will find that T final is equal to, it's 53.9, but with my sig figs, I probably ought to just leave it at 54 degrees Celsius. And that is my final number. Hopefully that problem made sense to you. And I'm just going to stress one last time that I think the minus signs is ultimately where people run into problems with this type of thing. So just pay extra special close attention to that. But hopefully this made sense. And if it did, you should let your computer know.